Welcome back, everybody. We have fixed our connection with Ben Canetti, who is a pilot and director of this weekend's big air show. Ben, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, just a little turbulence there, Ben. You know how that goes. Um, we know there is a lot to do to get ready for an air show like this, probably even more in a year like this when you move locations. Can you take us through what is happening the next couple of days now as you prepare? And can people see any of the dress rehearsals that might be going on? Sure. So literally about 15 minutes ago, Blue Angel number seven just landed here. Um, so he's in town. He's getting ready to inspect before the rest of Blue Angels arrive tomorrow. And then uh, by Thursday evening, we'll have the rest of uh, the performers here. So all their craft will be here probably by Thursday night. The dress rehearsals, we call it, will be Friday afternoon, same time as their show. And then, of course, the show center on Sunday. Yeah, so maybe just look up to the sky. You might get kind of an interesting sight. Uh, this is the first year that tickets were not free. Can you just kind of walk people through why there is a charge this year? And were you surprised by the, the pace of ticket sales? I mean, again, everything is now sold out for both days, at least online. Sure, the ticket sales are kind of an unknown because it's never been done here in Buffalo. It's very common throughout the industry and actually somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of air shows are paid or ticketed events. Um, when they're hosted on a military base, it's free because the Department of Defense will pay for that to host it for the community. But unfortunately, we were unable to do it this year at their base um, due to COVID and certain other restrictions. So when uh, we were canceled about two months ago, it was either moving downtown civilian show or no show at all. So. We did that. It's a very expensive event to put on. There's a uh, jet fuel costs a lot. So do hotel rooms, rental cars, everything else for the performers. So with that, somehow the um, there had to be a ticketed price with to go along with that. With the tickets going so fast for people who maybe weren't able to get tickets, but they still want to be able to see some of the show in some way. Can you possibly reveal a good spot that they can get at least a glimpse of it? Well, there is an overflow that um, the small boat harbor down there, Buffalo Outer Harbor Park, Buffalo Parks, um, they're doing their own event Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's not associated with the air show, but uh, it would probably not be a bad place to watch. Canal side, I know a lot of people plan on going down there. That's not going to be a great place to watch between the buildings and the skyway there. Um, we scope it by ourselves. It's not great. The best place, if you don't have a ticket, is find a friend with a boat. It's going to be amazing <laughs> out on the water. So I know if I was in work in this air show, I would be out on the water in my boat watching it from their front row seats. I got to tell you, finding a friend with a boat is just good life advice <laughs> at any point. Period. Um, but especially for something Amen. like this, just be aware of the water restrictions because there are some of those. Um, finally, how should people prepare for this show? I mean, what do they need to bring with them? What should they not bring with them? Maybe give us kind of the highlights of some of the rules there. Sure. So obviously uh, nothing you wouldn't bring in any other uh, large events. So no weapons, uh, no grills for the tailgate area. Um, the one thing we really want to stress is, especially those coming with young children and their families, hearing protection. Um, these things are exciting, they're loud, they're fast, um, and there's going to be a lot of them, but the kids are either going to laugh or they're going to cry when they hear a near supersonic jet passing by them. So protect those poor kids' ears. Um, it's going to be a loud event. Other than that, plan for traffic. Um, it's tight down there, as all of us Buffalonians know. Um, we have the gates open at 9 a.m. Flying starts at 12. So plan accordingly to get in there and give yourself plenty of time to get settled and not get stuck in traffic. We appreciate all the advice. Ben Kennedy is the director of the air show. He's a pilot himself. Thanks again for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Let us know if you find somebody with a boat. We'll be watching. <laughs> Important. Mine will be sitting in the slip. You guys can take it. <laughs> nice. Thanks, all right. Man. See you guys. We're going to from our Verify team. More and more electric cars are getting on the road. Eventually those cars will have to get off the road. Yeah, and they're going to age just like kind of every other vehicle, right? But there's this claim going around online right now, complete with a pretty compelling picture that suggests those cars are making a big mess when they have to get retired. Verify's Evan Kosloff shows us if it's legit. On Verify, we've seen some pretty out there claims, but it's not always that straightforward about what's real and what's not. Take this post with just shy of 800 shares, claiming that a quote, boneyard near Paris, France, has hundreds of decommissioned electric cars. The author writes, all of these have the same issue. The battery storage cells have given out. So we're verifying, was this fleet of electric cars dumped because of a battery issue? Our sources are info published online by the city of Paris and press releases from Bellore, the car's parent company. First, here's some backstory. 
The cars pictured here were part of a fleet of Autolib cars. We got that from zooming in on this picture here. The cars were introduced in 2011 and part of a partnership between the city of Paris and a company called Bellore. Fast forward to the end of 2016 when the deal fell apart. According to the city of Paris, Autolib's parent company reported a deficit of 179.3 million euros. And that's when the city voted to terminate the contract, which took effect on July 31st, 2018. Now, before this happened, Ernst & Young conducted an audit. According to the city of Paris, the audit included recommendations to the company to quote, improve the quality of service, in particular, the maintenance and cleanliness of vehicles and to relaunch a communications campaign. Over the years, several French news outlets have snapped photos and videos of the now defunct fleet at this field about 130 miles south of Paris. So we could verify that we found no evidence that the cars were taken out of commission because of a battery issue. The car sharing partnership just had some financial hiccups. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozlov.